What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video and today we're going to be going over the six bad habits that drain your bank account. All right, so like I said, this video we're going to be going over six bad habits that drain your bank account. And I've been doing a lot more of these like financial and just like life advice videos. So if these are videos that you guys enjoy, make sure you give it a thumbs up down below and let me know down in the comments what type of videos you are specifically interested in. And the reason why I'm doing more of these videos is I want to help people to ultimately live the life that they want and just being somebody who has gone through different financial hurdles. I'm only 28 years old, but I'm glad that I've had the financial lessons that I've had this young in my life um, because I can now make better decisions going forward the rest of my life and to actually have um, a peaceful and a better financial life and not make bad decisions like I had been making um, in my early 20s. And it's typically things that people in their early 20s do, but there are a lot of people who unfortunately don't ever get out of this behavior and they stay in this behavior and it holds them back. Um, so I'm just making these videos to help those who want to be helped. And if you don't want to be helped, then this probably is not the video for you. So number one is fast food. Now I went over this again in my previous video about how I paid off debt faster, but even when I'm out of you know complete debt and I'm not really like worrying so much about money in that regards, um, it's still a good habit to just not eat out so much. At the end of the day, all the eating out is is because you're probably failing to prepare. And what I mean by that is you're not actually taking the time to cook your food and you're just making decisions on the go because you don't have anything ready, you're procrastinating, um, you were being a sloth, you want things now. It's, it comes back to this instant gratification that we have in today's society. Um, a lot of people don't wanna actually put in the step and put in the work to have the things that they want and they get this instant gratification by being able to just get food when they want. So a lot of people, they eat out once, twice a day and ultimately that ends up being 10, 20 bucks a day multiply that by seven days a week. I mean, you can do the math. It's a lot of money that you're wasting each and every week and every month. And these are the same type of people who will complain that healthy food is too expensive or they can't afford to invest in a trainer because it is too expensive or they can't invest in whatever it is that they say they wanna do, um, but ultimately their bank account says otherwise because they do have the money, they're just spending it in other areas of their life. So number one would be fast food and the solution to that is just to make healthier choices. Cook your food at home. If you're looking for ideas about how to meal prep, I've done videos about meal prep. This isn't trying to tell you that you have to meal prep by any means. If you're somebody who can cook all your meals fresh or you wanna do like you know two big meals a day instead of you know multiple meals, whatever you wanna do that works for you, I would suggest doing that because you're gonna save a lot of money, you're gonna actually know what is going in your food and you're gonna make better conscious decisions because of you know, making your own food. And just to add on this, we are now in a society where we have all the information to get in shape, we have all the information to live healthier, we know what we need to do to get healthier and people are just not getting healthier. We have obesity levels at an all time high, we have depression at an all time high, um, suicides are at an all time high and a lot of it just doesn't make sense and a lot of it comes down to the fact that we're not taking care of ourselves. we're not putting ourselves first um, we're sacrificing our health for a job and i know we need to make money but you should not deteriorate like you get one body you should not be deteriorating your yourself for a job and ultimately what people do and another reason behind this video is people don't want to take that pay cut to be happier and, and live a healthier life because now They've bought a bunch of things that they're used to and they don't, they, they, they literally can't, they're not in a position to take a pay cut because their lifestyle is so inflated. So for me, it's, it's one of those things where you get one body, one life. So um, just take care of it because you don't want to be another statistic, honestly. And it's 100% preventable at the end of the day. The second bad habit that is actually draining your bank account would be convenience stores. Now. Personally, I know that I do go to convenience stores. I don't go every single day, um, but I know there is people who do. They come home from work and they're driving by the 7-Eleven or the gas station and they stop to get a drink. They stop to get a water bottle. They stop to get something of you know significance that they want. Um, but ultimately gas stations and convenience stores, their prices are super inflated. So you're paying you know $1.50, $2 for a bottle of water, 
when you can get a whole gallon for a dollar or you can get a 24 pack of water for you know two three bucks at walgreens so try to avoid stopping at convenience stores make us make a trip to you know walgreens or cbs or whatever place you have nearby your grocery store and actually buy these things in bulk if you like to have a water bottle with you at all times then buy them in bulk or buy a reusable water bottle that you can refill um, convenience stores are just way 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 overpriced i mean that's where they make most of their money yes they make money on gas but most of their profit margins do come from you actually going into the store and getting the items that you get because if they're selling you a bottle of water for two dollars that they literally bought a whole 24 pack for two dollars that's a pretty good profit margin so that would be number two number three would be subscriptions and again i touched on this in my video all about debt but some people did not watch that one so hopefully you get the point in this one and this is something that a lot of us just tend to overlook whether it's a gym membership that you're not using it's netflix hulu apple music icloud dropbox I mean, everything now is a subscription service. So I'm not telling you to not have any subscriptions. I'm not telling you that you need to not do any of this, but really audit which ones you are using, which ones are actually adding value to your life and which ones are not. Now, at the end of the day, you may have an audiobook or you may have a music one because they add a lot of value to your life. You're able to listen to music while you work out and it helps you to stay more motivated and get you to the gym. I say that's a great thing to go ahead and pay for because it's having benefits for you in your life. Now, if you like to watch Netflix, like again, there's nothing wrong with watching Netflix, like that's fine, but don't become somebody who just veges out on the couch and doesn't get anything done. And you know, you're just wasting your time watching a ton of Netflix and you're not actually progressing in life because at the end of the day, all of it is is entertainment. It's an escape. You're not actually benefiting in any way from watching Netflix. It's not making you more money. It's not making you do anything productive. It's not doing anything to help you to actually grow as a person. It's simply a way for you to escape for 30 minutes, an hour, three hours, eight hours for some of you, and just kind of get away from real life. And that's the thing that a lot of people don't realize with these subscriptions is it's not just, hey, I'm paying the $15 for this subscription and that's it. It's there's second and third order consequences to each of these things. So the first thing is the second that you buy a TV, you spent the money on a TV, but now you are also having a second order consequence that you're gonna to have to consume content on this TV. So now you're going to have to sign up for these services and they're gonna cost you money. The third consequence would be now you have to invest time to actually watch these programs. And the fourth consequence would be maybe you're losing a lot of time and maybe you're losing a lot of money from these things because now you no longer have those to actually achieve and work towards what you want. Um, and then you're somebody who complains that you don't have time to go to the gym or you don't have any money in your bank account but you can spend all of this time, you know, vegging out in front of the TV. So I don't have anything against Netflix. I don't have anything against YouTube. I don't have anything against these services. It's all about like controlling it, using it responsibly. Like if you have subscriptions to all of these services, I can guarantee you there's, there's multiple services that you are not using. So just try to cut down and you could save hundreds of dollars every single year. Number four would be signing up to email lists. So this is a newer one and this is one that I personally have started to really declutter in my life. It is great to get emails from companies that you like to know, hey, they're having a sale and I really like their products so I'm gonna go ahead and get it. But the issue with this is now you are spending money that you really didn't intend to spend only because you got an email that there was a sale. And so what I was finding for me personally is I'm signed up to a couple different um, newsletters for video editing services and they have different overlays and different templates and different plugins that I can download. And they were sending me almost every single week, new plugin, 40% off, new plugin, 40% off, get it only until Friday at this price. And then at Friday they would increase the price. So. I was finding that I was spending, you know, $40 a week every two weeks on these plugins that I really didn't need. I was like trying to justify that maybe I'll use them in the future and I can save myself some money by getting them today. But I ended up just unsubscribing from all of these lists because I just found that I was buying these plugins only because they were on sale and justifying it. Like I said, that I'll probably use it in the future. Um, this can go for anything, whether it's food, clothing, um, you know, subscription services, like we talked about in the last one, they're trying to get you back. Anything that sends you these things. I honestly unsubscribed from probably like 30 or 40 different newsletters in the last two weeks. And it's nice not to actually see them anymore, you know, to keep my email more condensed and focused on 
the few things that I actually do want inside of my email inbox. So I know many of you out there do this. You, you get these emails and you spend money that you really didn't intend on spending and you're only spending because there's a sale. Bad habit number five would be alcohol and cigarettes. This is a clear, obvious one for most people, but some people just kind of ignore this fact. So I just want to reiterate this fact to you that if you are somebody who has to have a beer every night, you have to have wine every night, uh, maybe you are a smoker, whatever it is, you are wasting thousands of dollars every single year. The thing with the alcohol, yeah, you drink it, maybe you get a little bit of a buzz, and then the next day, a couple hours later, it's gone. You have to keep buying it over and over and over to continue to get that feeling. And you have to, it, over time, you have to indulge in more of it to get the same feeling. So something that may have given you a little bit of a buzz. I know when I first had my first beer ever, I mean, off of one beer, I was pretty buzzed, you know, but going down the road, it would take me five, six beers to get that same feeling. So you end up spending a lot more money to ultimately chase that feeling that you are going after. Now, I have never smoked a cigarette in my life. I never intend on smoking a cigarette in my life, but I know that cigarette prices have gone through the roof. It's just not a good habit at the end of the day. I mean, you already know this. I'm not gonna sit here and drill you on the negative things that come along with um, smoking cigarettes. You already know it's clear as day, it's out there, but for whatever reason, people still decide to do it. And if you're smoking a pack a day, I mean, I've seen cigarettes as high as $10 a pack. I mean, I don't really know what they are because I don't buy them, but I know they're anywhere from five to $10 a pack, maybe even more at this point. And right there you're spending 35 to 50 dollars a week on cigarettes multiply that by 52 weeks and you're spending a ton of money every single year on cigarettes and again these are the same people that will say organic food is too expensive healthy food is too expensive the gym membership is too expensive i don't have time for the gym these are the same people that will continue to replay these stories and these excuses in their head on why they can't do something to actually better themselves and they just stay stuck in this loop so if this is you go through your bank account and actually see, like stop ignoring the problem, stop just swiping your card and not looking at your finances. Actually see how much money you're spending because I don't know what it is. Maybe you say that you want a house, you know, and you want to get a down payment. Maybe you want a new car. Go through your bank account and literally look at it and see how much you're spending on alcohol, cigarettes, marijuana, whatever it may be in your city or state and actually look at how much you're spending because you probably could have enough money to buy that car or to buy that down payment on that house or whatever it is that you're actually saying that you want, but your bank account proves otherwise. That would be number five. And number six would be jealousy and trying to keep up with other people. This is a huge one, especially for my millennials out there, my younger viewers, um, especially even those that are whatever the generation is that's younger than the millennial generation, I think they might even have this, this FOMO even worse than we do. And the issue with this is with social media. I mean, social media can be a great tool, but when all you see all day is people getting new cars, people getting new clothes, people going on vacations, people with the you know dream body or the, the dream relationship goal or whatever it is, like you can start to get this FOMO and you can start to chase these external validations. You can think that, you know, I'm gonna overextend myself and I'm gonna get this car so that I can feel valuable and so that other people will see me and they will think that I have it together and that I'm super valuable and just try to portray this image um, when internally you haven't solved the real issue. You haven't solved why you feel that way. You haven't solved what in your childhood affected you because everything that we go through, like any feelings that we have in life, they've always stemmed from childhood, whether that's how you handle relationships, how you handle finances, how you handle life events. It's just a proven fact. And it's something that you have to self-reflect on to really understand and you have to sit down and really get deep with yourself to understand that most of your beliefs have come from friends, family, schools, all of that growing up, you know, your church, your religion, whatever, all of that has come from those experiences. So ultimately just trying to keep up with other people and not really getting internal with yourself, getting real with yourself on who you are, what you want out of life, what you, you know, value in life and just seeking that external validation is going to literally financially ruin you. I've had this happen in my past. It's a big part of why I got into so many financial issues in the past was trying to seek that external thing. And it came a lot from 
my childhood when I was growing up, you know, my parents, I always saw them going and getting new cars. We moved into a big house, even though it was literally my two parents and me, we had like almost a 4,000 square foot house, um, you know, and my first car was a Lexus. And then once I graduated from college, you know, I went and got an Audi and I just, I just thought this was the progression. And when I was in high school, my parents gave me a credit card for me to go to the movies on Friday with my friends. And I would go into Hollister and I would buy clothes with it. And I had no sense of money. And these thoughts, behaviors, and actions that I had in my childhood carried over into my adulthood and ultimately caused me a lot of problems. So I know this actually last point went super deep and um, I didn't intend on it going that deep, but hopefully you guys maybe clicked on this, maybe you understood a little bit more about what I'm saying. But those would be the six habits that are draining your bank account. Which ones are you guilty of? Which ones are you going to address in the future? Let me know down in the comments below get real with yourself think about the things that you maybe are wasting money on things that are draining your bank account and actually start taking action on it because if you just watch this video and you don't actually change anything about your daily habits and you just go back to those habits then nothing's going to change and you literally wasted i don't know 10 15 minutes of your life watching this video so if you're going to actually consume this information make sure that you actually use it let me know down in the comments below give this video a thumbs up and i'll see you in the next one